Well, now some headlines from that spot. The push for a Dreamer immigration bill gaining steam in the U.S. House of Representatives. A bipartisan majority asking Speaker Paul Ryan to schedule a debate on proposals to replace DACA. The bill, considered most popular, would protect Dreamers from deportation and include some border security. It does not include building that border wall. Meanwhile, Newborn babies are now allowed on the floor of the U.S. Senate. The new rule inspired by Illinois Democrat and new mom Tammy Duckworth. Her daughter, Miley Pearl, born earlier this month. Dirk Duckworth is the only sitting senator to give birth in American history. So, seems appropriate. She should be able to take the baby to work. All right, Ainsley, over Thank to you. Thank you, Steve. President Trump's Faith Advisory Council speaking out following an invite-only meeting at Wheaton College involving roughly 50 faith leaders. Reports say the meeting was very anti-Trump and discussed the future of the evangelical movement in light of the Trump presidency. Here with Insight, co-hosts of the Christian Broadcast Network's Faith Nation, Jenna Browder and David Brody. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Great to be with you. Good morning, Thank Ainsley. you. Well, Jenna, we'll start with you. Tell us the story here. What happened? Right. Well, this was supposed to be a meeting, Ainsley, about evangelism and about faith. But from what we understand, it really turned quickly into a Trump bashing. Sources close to the meeting, uh, with knowledge of it, saying that, uh, you know, they, they really didn't realize, some of these people, what they were getting into. And in fact, a few people actually walked out of the meeting. That's right. And Ainsley, I will say that it was one-sided venting here is what happened. This is a two-day conference. The first side became basically this free-for-all, uh, this anti Donald Trump free for all. I got so many folks ticked off, as Jenna was saying, people walked out. And so, and I think that that's important to understand that after day one, they left and then day two continued on, but they were gone. If you look at the polls, uh, evangelicals voted for him, voted for President Trump at a record level. And the latest uh, Pew poll research shows that his approval rating among evangelicals is 78%. He won with 81%. So he hasn't mm -hmm. lost a lot of the evangelicals. What do you think, David, his greatest legacy is? Is it the conservative judicial appointments that he's made? Well, I think that's huge. Uh, and remember, we go back to the campaign, 20 or so, that he actually said he would actually point uh, from that list, Supreme Court nominations or Supreme Court nominees from that list. So that's going to be a huge part of his legacy. I will say the other part has got to be Israel. I mean, look, uh, he has talked about it, and it's true. President after president talked about Jerusalem being the capital of Israel, but never moved the embassy there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then here along comes Donald Trump and actually does it. And that's what evangelicals love about him, that he, he actually says... Uh, he does what he says. Yeah, promises made, promises kept. So were these just establishment pastors? Were they part of the establishment or, or never, never Trumpers? Yeah, from what we understand, a lot of them were more uh, moderate in their uh, beliefs mm -hmm. when it relates to uh, public policy, and, and they do lean Anyone a little bit Anyone famous that we would have known about that's, that went to that meeting? Well, there were, you know, for, you know, Tim Keller, obviously in New York, a big mega pastor. Yeah, now he hasn't Church. typically, yeah, he hasn't mm -hmm. typically been involved in politics. So, you know, it's hard to kind of classify all of them a certain way. I, I will just say this, that, you know, you've got the Washington Post and some other outlets talking about this big evangelical meeting. Look, the truth of the matter is this is a meeting with a bunch of evangelicals okay. that really have no say within the Trump administration. And so, and the fact that he had no uh, Trump advisory group members there, I mean, I think that speaks right, volumes. Real quickly, what's going to happen to this pastor that's held in Turkey? He's accused of terrorism, aiding an Islami Islamist movement, and spying. Do they have any evidence? And his trial is on May 7th. What do you think will happen? Hmm. It's going to be tough. Uh, you know, I, I will say this, that, you know, Erdogan in Turkey for a long time is trying to go from a secular viewpoint uh, right into that Islam, Isma, Islamic viewpoint. As a matter of fact, he talks about this army of Islam that he wants to rise up against Israel. There's reports about that. So this has been a nasty, nasty turn in Turkey uh, and some real issues for the United States. And I think President Trump is going to be involved in this as well. Yeah, yeah. Right. Of course, he was tweeting about it. And the president's attorney, Jay Sekulow, he is a, a leading attorney when it comes to religious freedom. He's also closely linked to this. So with both of those forces behind behind him, I think that'll really yeah. help. Not going away. If you ask Americans, they say he's just on trial for his Christian beliefs. Thank right, you so much for, sure. for being here. We appreciate it. God bless Thanks, you. Family. The Thank city you. of Houston preparing to celebrate the life of Barbara Bush as tributes pour in from across the country. We are live in Houston next. And Planned Parenthood gets nearly half a billion dollars from taxpayers every year. And now they want to spend $30 million on the Democrats during the midterms. Dana Lash says the public is being robbed. Taxpayer dollars, she says. She's on deck next.
Make of America. It's a high school.